In 1945, a German woman named Erna Bielhardt was arrested by Soviet soldiers on charges that she had been a concentration camp supervisor. The place in question was Stutthof, one of the cruelest detention centers of the Third Reich, where thousands of people suffered indescribable pain and met their end. The following year, Bielhardt, along with other women who also held various positions in the field, were brought to trial to determine her degree of responsibility. As witnesses filed past and gave their version of events, the public was stunned. It seemed incredible that women so young and harmless-looking should have committed crimes so savage that they would chill the blood of the most reckless. However, Bielhardt stressed over and over again that she had nothing to do with the crimes, that she had never hit anyone, much less murdered prisoners. In fact, according to her, she was just as shocked as the rest of the room to hear about the torture. Camp survivors confirmed these facts, although the court was not entirely convinced. For Bielhardt, it was a matter of life and death, within a few hours, the judges would decide the fate of each defendant, and would make it known whether he was to be hanged or imprisoned. Do not move from your screen, because in the next few minutes we will tell you everything about the trial of the Stutthof guards. The Stutthof concentration camp was the first to be established outside the borders of Germany during World War II. It was built in Poland, in a region far from large urban centers, surrounded by swamps and forests. It officially opened its doors in September 1939, and in its beginnings it was thought of as a place to house the most important members of Polish society. The prisoners came from the economic, political and cultural elite of the country, so that political leaders, religious leaders, famous artists and highly prestigious intellectuals lived in their barracks. A year before its inauguration, the Nazis had drawn up lists of Poles considered dangerous who had to be arrested immediately. The underlying objective was to reorganize the country in the image and likeness of national socialist ideals, and the first step for this was to eliminate these subjects. Although Stutthof was supposed to house civilians, as a consequence of the war the Nazis also sent prisoners of war there. Within weeks of opening, there were already 6,000 people locked up, and the number grew as Germany deported Jews from conquered territories. The site had 40 subcamps, whose inmates were forced to do forced labor to supply the German military industry. Most of the slave workers had to attend a weapons factory daily to help in the production of war material. As in any concentration camp, the living conditions in Stutthof were deplorable. Over the years that it worked, an estimated 110,000 people passed through it. More than half of that total died from the spread of diseases such as typhus or from lack of basic food. Those who were weakened by hunger were selected by the guards to die in the gas chambers, since they were not fit for forced tasks. Most of those executed in this way were Jewish women and children, who spent their last seconds of life inhaling the Zyklon B poison. Among all the crimes that occurred inside the Stutthof, Perhaps the most chilling is the rumor that the SS used the corpses to extract their body fat and make soaps. Although this was never fully confirmed, it has been proven that the Nazis in the camp subjected the inmates to terrible torture. At the beginning of 1945, when the Third Reich was on the verge of defeat, the leaders of Stutthof organized the evacuation of the camp. Thousands of exhausted, starving and sick prisoners were forced to walk hundreds of miles to get away from the Allies. According to specialists, 25,000 people died in this process. When the Soviets liberated the camp on May 9, 1945, they found no more than 100 survivors, those who hid from the Nazis to avoid forced marches. Following the surrender of Germany, the Allies rounded up what few Stutthof personnel they could find, there were 72 SS officers and 6 female supervisors. In 1946 the trial began, and the survivors declared the torture to which they had been subjected by the Nazi women. They were Jenny Barkman, Elizabeth Becker, Wanda Klaff, Eva Paradies, Gerda Steinhardt and Erna Bielhardt, who we told you about at the beginning of the video. Those who witnessed the sessions later stated that the defendants did not seem interested in what was said about them. In fact, Barkman was seen absently fixing her hair, smiling and flirting with the guards who were watching her. The only one who was nervous was Erna Bielhardt, who said the following, 
I was affiliated with the National Socialist Party since 1933, I like the Führer's idea that we would be a dominant nation, but I never liked my job, the prisoners were tormented too much. I had to look the other way. In fact, she resigned six weeks after being appointed camp supervisor, after which she dedicated herself to tending wounded soldiers. After much doubt, the judges decided to spare her life and sentence her to five years in prison. The case of the other women, however, was very different, since the witnesses assured that they were in charge of selecting those who would die in the gas chambers. One of them, Wanda Claff, proudly acknowledged it, I am very intelligent and I have always been brilliant in my work. I beat at least two prisoners a day. One survivor stated the following about defendant Ava Paradis, once, she ordered a group of inmates to strip naked in the middle of the snow, and she showered us with ice-cold water. If any of them moved, she would beat us up. The evidence was abundant and the brutality evident, so the court sentenced the five Studhoff supervisors to death by hanging. The date of the executions was set for July 4, 1946, and the place chosen was a hill near the city of Gdansk, in Poland. That day, a crowd of 20,000 people gathered to witness the death of the monsters that had caused so much pain. A scaffold was not set up, but it was decided to put a rope around their necks, pass it through a post and tie it to the back of a truck. Once the vehicle moved forward, the women would remain slightly suspended in the air for the minutes necessary for them to be strangled to death. The first executed was Jenny Barkman, whose last words were these, life is a pleasure, and that is why it ends quickly. The audience watched as her body rose, the knot wrapped around her throat, her feet pounding in a frantic rhythm. When she stood still, it was the turn of the others, who passed one by one towards their final destination. The bodies were left hanging there, so that the next convicts would have a clear view of what awaited them. Not only the five women from Studhoff were killed, but also six other male guards who had tortured prisoners. This is how the victims of the concentration camp found some justice for the horrors to which they were subjected by Nazism. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, do you think Erna Bielhardt should have been executed? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.